So this video is more than just a contest, let's look at my latest additions to my Thomas collection via my local charity shop. First up is a MASSIVE Block Puzzle Thomas. It's dated 2002 and Tommy brand. It's a licensed Thomas product and made in China. This toy has a classic Thomas face and plenty of play appeal. At the rear, a door opens up so you can retrieve the blocks from inside. It's a stunning addition to my collection. Next up is a Golden Bear Thomas, and this one's smaller than my other Golden Bear Thomas. Licensing details are Brit Allcroft 1995. Although it's devoid of many of the details which often define the Thomas, the classic face and number on the side is sometimes all you need. Very much a less is more sort of Thomas. I have to admit I quite like this smaller Golden Bear Thomas. Now here are two curious finds, distorted in look and overall the same size. These two may have another home and they are devoid of any licensing info. Maybe the audience knows where these two come from. Of interest, both of their faces are set looking down. Does this mean anything? The wheels on these two models are in fact steel rollers. And yet again, we find another variant of some classic characters and really makes you wonder all up how many variations are there of Thomas over the years. Now here's a nice little find, it's a wind-up James, licensed to Brit Olcroft 1993, and it's made in China. It's nicely detailed and has a great looking face. This wind-up is in a style that I've never seen before. What's a bit unusual is the tenders attached to the engine. The wheel configuration is interesting as well, as there's only a single wheel under the rear of this model. I wonder who else out there has other characters in the same style as this one. The next are from a range which was commonly seen in supermarkets around Australia. I call them Check Out Thomases because that's where you used to find them for $2. Marked as Ghislaine Thomas 2007, they are distorted in style and size. Most disturbing about this series of models was their clown-like faces, or maybe we could call them mischievous. Underneath, these models had a common wheel sets for movements. And what's interesting, I haven't seen them in the shops for quite some years now. I can guarantee you they all sold out. Last, but by no means least, is this very impressive Plastic Fantastic Thomas. It has no licensing details, and it really has the sniff of a knockoff. It comes with a great classic face, and detailing which defies its small size. And what's interesting, when you compare it to the classic Ertl or Take Along, it fits style-wise somewhere in between the two. It's a shame it's made of plastic, I'd love to see this style of model as a die cast. Inside is a spring-loaded motor, and it's a very impressive model indeed, considering it's a knockoff. It carries some serious Thomas Mojo. Now I'm going to take you for a look in my local hobby store. In Australia, both Backman and Hornby Thomas trains exist in the same marketplace. Backman have an edge because they use forward-facing packaging, which is peg-hung, displaying the trains facing the customer. Often in hobby stores here, you'll see Hornby stock stacked end-on. This is done for a number of reasons. The main reason is to stop the stock toppling off the shelves. Pricing between the brands is similar, although I feel Hornby train sets present better overall value. That Hornby steam mallard has a little boy inside me saying buy buy buy. So why do I go to hobby shops? Wouldn't I be better off buying online? My first bit of advice is simple. If your hobby shop is not as well stocked as this one, well go find one which is. I've been coming to this shop since I was a very young teenager as I used to fly control line model planes. I still come here for inspiration and problem solving and advice from people who know what they're talking about. It's here where I sighted the Gandhi Dancer and I come here to find the HO wheel sets that I need for my toy conversions. I've found it's impossible to size things up or get a true gauge of what something's like when you're buying online. And thank you to Micromodels Hobbyland found at Hornsby in Sydney's north. They've certainly been of assistance recently with information that I've needed about model trains. It truly is one very serious model shop. My son caught a glimpse of a Hornby Thomas train set I recently purchased for a video. He instantly mastered how to play with it. So he's gone from take and play straight up to HO. I dare say he'll be doing G-Scale next. It's amazing to see the magnetic attraction between Thomas and my son. He's only 20 months old and can't seem to get enough Thomas. At the moment, he seems far more interested in Thomas and Friends than Chuggington. This change of focus has been happening over the last two months. Come, look. Come. Do you want to give Thomas a good night kiss? Good night, Thomas. Okay, now for the mini me contest. 
This contest is very different to the previous contests I've done, so let me first show you an example entry. Say hello to my five diesel tens. I have a track master, which is the biggest, a wooden, which is a little bit smaller, two tag-alongs, which are smaller again, and an ertel, which is one of the longest that I've got. Between each of these four styles, there are huge differences in the way Diesel 10 is represented. One of the big differences is the way his face is represented. Another one is the differences in his scrap grabbing claw. The Trackmaster claw is the only one which actually opens. Of all the Diesel 10s I own, my favourite one is my Take Along, which I put HO wheels on. That's given him a custom touch the others don't have. This style also has an articulated claw arm, which really adds to his appeal. I feel he's nicely detailed and painted, even though he's a bit distorted from what I see on TV. My count for the Gandhi dancer mistakes is four. Thank you for watching. As boring as they are, these are the rules, and rules are needed to keep the contest fair. Do not use titles at the start of your video. In this contest, you're allowed to upload multiple entries. The conditions are. Each entry must feature a different Thomas and Friends licensed character. If you own them, you can make a video about each different character. Do not repeat a character you've already entered into the contest. In your entry, do not use a mix of characters. More than one toy defines a collection. So here are two Bocos, or four Mavises, five Troublesome Trucks, and two Crankies. If I was entering the contest, I could make a video about each character and pick off one as my special featured character. When talking about your special featured character, please tell me what you like about it over the others. Please show your collection together in one shot, as I need to see you have whole ownership of this collection. I don't want to see pictures or videos ripped from the web and touted as your collection. Entries are to be between 60 to 120 seconds in duration. It's actually very difficult to speak about one set of characters for over 60 seconds. Please add at the end of your video your count of the times I made a mistake in saying Gandhi Dancer from the Thomas Mini Me video. This number must appear in the video either by verbal or written down on paper or a title made into the video. Annotations are not allowed here. The key to winning is do the very best you possibly can. I will take into consideration the ability of the entrants related to their age. It will also help you to watch what other entrants are up to. If you feel they are not following the rules, please let me know via personal mail in YouTube. When entering your videos, please title your entry, Mini Me Contest and the character you're featuring. Because I did an example of Diesel 10 earlier, my entry would look like this. Mini Me Contest, Diesel 10. Send your entry or entries as a video response to this contest video. Personally, if I was entering, I would try and pick off unusual characters and try and steer clear of the obvious one. I also feel a single entry could be the big winner in this contest. It was delivered in a stunning style and had a very unusual character. First prize is the beautifully rendered Buckman Gordon. Oh, the indignity. I'm stuck in this plastic box. There's also a composite coach for Gordon to pull. Maybe the jewel in this prize is a tiny powered Pez Thomas pulling a Tommy play rail train as featured in my video, Thomas Mini Me. Second prize is the very tidy Buckman Edward. And to make sure he's really useful, there are two troublesome trucks for him to work with. Along for the ride is a super cute and dare say highly collectible custom made HO Pez Thomas. Third prize is the most unusual wooden jet engine with Thomas, mint in box. As I've stated before, it's one of my favourite Thomas stories. And of course, there's also this little blue guy who will put a smile on your face every day you play with him. As crazy as this sounds, I'm also going to throw in a very special mystery prize to whoever uploads the most videos to this contest. Now listen carefully, this prize will only be as good as the quality that you upload. If you upload a bunch of wham bam thank you ma'am entries, this prize will be small. If you upload a heap of really good quality videos, this prize may easily outweigh the first prize in this contest. What's also different is the closing date of this contest will coincide with the time my Thomas Mini Me video hits a million views. And again, I'm telling you watch out 
I've had some videos pull a million views in very short time. And my advice to you is keep a very keen eye on that view count of the Thomas Mini Me video if you want to do some stealth uploading near the end. And now for a peep of some things to come. I've been looking very carefully into the world of Wooden Railway and finding some amazing pricing anomalies. One set with 35 pieces cost me $200. Another with 32 pieces cost me $160. Yet another with 100 pieces only cost me $50. So crikeys, what have I uncovered here? And yes, all these sets interconnect, but are all these sets made to the same quality? Well, for all those who are entering the competition, I really wish you good luck, and I'm really pleased to be able to bring you some decent prizes to the hardcore Thomas fans who I know are out there. And I'd really like to thank you for your support over the years. And it's your support which enables me to have these fantastic competitions.